Now, we've got a huge problem, guys, because this little single piece of paper has made me realize that this could be the end. It's not good news. Well, this is a pretty typical thing that I like to do, guys. Go for a run nice and early in the morning. For me, it's been a constant in my life. I've run for 15 years, and I actually think it's correlated to really help with what I'm trying to do with eBay and YouTube. It's that whole persistent attack towards a long-term goal and uh, that delayed gratification that you, you, you require um, to be able to achieve a, a long-term goal. They kind of go hand in hand with the, the mentality behind it. And I kind of thrive, I've always, I've always enjoyed that from a running aspect. And I've really adapted it into the eBay and the YouTube side of things. And I really cannot recommend you guys, if you've never run before, to set yourself a goal to run 5Ks. And if you've run 5Ks and you've never run 10Ks, try and do that. And just try and build it up and you'll find just how, how much of an effect it has on your entire life. Anyway, here's one of the lads right now, Paulie. Let's get this 5K done. Probably shouldn't have run today, but we've just done 5.2Ks and the split I think was about a 5.15, which in miles I'll have to put it up as a little screen grab because I'm not 100% sure. But this is where we're going to go today, Alfred's, and I'm more looking at that to be honest with you, Foster's Bakery. I might grab myself a little breakfast pie, which is a meat pie, which is very Australian, but uh, it's a good way to start the day. Not that I ever have it. This is just a rare day. Uh, but yeah, run done. What are we, 6.30 in the morning? It's just a good way to start the day. All right. A new day. A new day. This is looking really good, guys. First day of the month, we did 490, then we did a 646, and then last night, we had we finished off at 649. And then from a listing standpoint, 10 went up, 10, 9, 6, 13, and 4. That's actually $500 in value every day, which is our new listing process. So $1,000, 2000 $3,000 has gone into eBay, and that $1,500 has actually netted us $1,700 in sales. So it's above average. We don't normally get that much. Um, so to see $1,700 come in in just three days has been brilliant. And the momentum should really continue because I'm going to list up here another $500 for three and a half grand. And on the back of some really strong days and then some more healthy listing days, another two grand to go in over the next four days. This should rocket into the two grand mark pretty quickly which will get us really close to our monthly April goal of $11,000. So I'm really pumped to see those numbers. So it's really important that today we continue to crush and keep momentum rolling because when you've got momentum on eBay, the best thing you can do is keep the momentum rolling. So that will go to the post office very, very shortly. I'll look out the couple of other sales that have come through that need to be shipped off in just a second. And then I've got a few little bits and pieces on the floor here that we're just finishing up from a listing standpoint. So the week is looking pretty strong. I actually sold this, um, which was from Selwyn. It was part of a consignment deal. Uh, you guys may have seen it. It was... Actually, I don't even know what it was. But it sold for a very good price. We got this Nikon. It's a Nikon Coolpix P600. There it is there. Pretty, pretty nice camera. Um, so yeah, this camera sold for $350.
But like a lot of the items that I'm doing with Selwyn, it was done on consignment. So it's a bit like the, um, the Pokemon game that we sold um, a couple of days ago for him as well. I think we're going to make about 100 I think it was like $120 in profit each after fees and postage. It won't cost a lot to ship off though, this, um, fortunately, because it's in a night, it's got its nice little, um, it's got its nice little carry case. So that's going to obviously give a lot of protection in the post itself. I'm obviously going to do a lot of bubble wrap. Um, and I'm going to put it into a box as well. So there's no issues from a sense of safety in the post. Um, and it's also not an overly large size. That's the other good thing about cameras as well. Um, so it is a category I'd like to get into. It's not a category I know at all. I just used the comps on eBay to determine that this would be worth about 350. And sure enough, that's what it's gone on to sell for. So that's good news because that's sold in the space of just a couple of weeks. Um, so I think... Might not have any boxes, unfortunately, left over from the post the other day. But I'll be able to go out to Bunnings when I maybe drop the rest of the post off and I'll pinch it and then do that this afternoon. This was a slightly better sale, though. Number 10. Tub number 10. So I bought a lot of these shoes off Scotty last Wednesday. These are my least favourite. It's not a brand I would normally pick up, but it was nice to see that we got such a fast sell-through rate. So the brand is High Tech. I don't know if you guys source High Tech or, or sell High Tech. I personally don't. It, it is a US size 13, and that was the best thing about his, his shoe haul. Um, they're all large sizes. And the best thing about it is, as you can see here, they've like never been used either. So, you know, really nice pair of work shoes high tech, these are the walk lights, and we sold them for $35. Now, I think being a, oh, pardon me, being a 13, um, that's probably going to have to go into a medium satchel, I think. So, you know, it's not a fantastic sale price considering you've got to pay uh, up to $12 in postage. Um, brings it down to a $23 sale price. But I got them in such a big bulk deal where the average cost of good on that would have been literally a couple of dollars so it's a nice little sale price there and we also have another one that has come through and they haven't paid for it yet which is very very annoying really frustrating i did just actually notice on the order that they're a brand new seller oh sorry a brand new buyer i've got zero feedback which is uh a little bit concerning what do we got in here all the Toy Story characters in there. What I am looking for, there are six action figures that I am actually, six action figures that I'm actually looking for here. There we go. They're all Lord of the Rings action figures. Have a look at them. So that's one. Let's just find them all here. This guy's another one. I don't know Lord of the Rings, guys. Never watched it. I actually, I've got a funny story with Lord of the Rings. I went to the cinemas uh, with a friend back when I was whatever age, you know, pretty young, uh, when Lord of the Rings first came out. And I watched the second movie first. Talk about one way to not enjoy a series is watching a second episode or the second movie of a series. And it was a four-hour marathon film. It felt like five hours. It went forever. And... Um, I left the cinemas going, well, that'll just about do me. I didn't know what was going on. Had no context to the movie. And uh, I was off it. So, I don't think I ever watched any of the other movies, to be honest. Which I know is going to get a lot of, uh, probably negativity in the comments. But, uh, just not a, not a Lord of the Rings fan. But there you go. Three, six. And we got 40 bucks for it. So I'm going to put that into a satchel, actually. I'm just going to put a heap of bubble wrap around it and put it into a satchel. So, not too bad. Melbourne Demons, AFL hat. $20 sale price, coupon activated or a best offer, one or the other. Uh, $18.95 we ended up getting for that. We'll put it into a box. It'll be a $10 sale price. Not something that I'm picking up anymore. Like I'm cleaning out so much stuff, guys. All the stuff... All the stuff I used to buy, I don't buy, but I still have. So I'm still selling it off. But it's a great education process to see the sales come in and know, and you know, 
you look at it and you break it down and you really analyze the numbers and you think to yourself, why am I trying to get a $10 sale price on all of these hats? Like, I don't know. I alluded to it in the last video that I put up. And it's like, it's a love-hate because there's not a lot of money in those hats. So like, you know, $2 into $10. I don't know why I'm bothering. I would be more motivated to sell hats if I was able to find items like this. This is Matt at Flip Weekly. He's actually the sponsor of today's video as well. And I subscribe to this newsletter every single Thursday it comes out. And I've just got this week's new installment. I won't give away too much information because I want you guys to go and subscribe and catch up on his newsletters um, that he's published already. But um, he's found this Sega uh, World Australia 1997 vintage hat. And it's just tails. It's just like, it looks like a kid's hat. He found it for $2 and it's gone on to sell for 250 bucks. Apparently anything from Sega World is worth a lot of money. Um, he's put some other comps up from other different items from Sega World and they're all, some of them are upwards of $1,000. I've never come across this at all in my life. And to be honest, that's why I actually subscribe to this newsletter to get all this new, useful information, just like watching YouTube videos. This newsletter is a great source of info. So definitely go and give it a follow. I'm going to link all the details to Matt's newsletter. Like I said, he's sponsoring this video to raise awareness of the newsletter. Um, so it'd be great to get you guys on board. To be honest, a huge shout out to Courtney actually from her work yesterday. She, um, she got a lot of those orders facilitated for me, which was brilliant. I don't have to do that today now, which is, which is great. And what it means is I can actually help you guys out um, by showing you this little, little health check of this eBay page. Um, now, I think this is a really important thing for you guys to be doing just to get a bit of a, an awareness to how your store is from a health perspective. And the first step that you're going to want to do is you want to go to your listings tab and you're going to want to go to active, listings active. And then on the homepage there, it'll tell you 56,000 or what, sorry, 52,000 and you've got 1,600 active. Obviously for me, see what your numbers sit at. Um, I'm going to grab the calculator off my laptop here. I'm just going to do a little calculation to work out what the store value is. So this is active listings that haven't yet sold, that are in my store ready for sale. And I'm going to divide it by the number of items that I've got. And that average works out to $32.72. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm, I'm going to cross-reference this number to my average sale price of the stock that has actually gone on to sell over the last 90 days. And we're pretty much 90 days through this year currently, so it's going to be an easy one to just go into performance sales. And then we're going to go to this year. And there it is there. The average sale price is $36.70. So I've got a $32 average unsold, but I've got a $36 sold. And what that tells me is it's, it's, it's better than it was because I did this test last uh, October, November and my active in-store unsold was sitting at $28 but my average sale price was $35. So there was a big $7 difference there and it told me that I had a lot of low-hanging fruit that actually wasn't selling because my average was so low in-store but my, uh, my sale price was so much higher that it told me that all that low hanging stuff just wasn't being sold because if it was, it would be a lot closer to the store value. Hopefully that makes sense. You really wanna try and have those numbers as close as possible. So the fact that I've got a $36.70 average sale price and a 32 store value tells me that I could probably cull a little bit more to get that number even closer to the average sale price of 36. I think a really good one to, to I think a really good checklist is to go, what's my numbers? And if it's $10 or more, you 100% need to go and do a health check and uh, stock take your inventory and, and have a bit of a look at it. So what I mean by that is, say it's an average sale price of $35, but your store value sits at $25. I would go and start culling out some cheap stuff, start pulling out some of that, and then try and get that average store value amount up to your average sale price to get it a little bit more closer. Um, look, I just... I, didn't, I haven't seen this test anywhere. It's just something that I've played around with the numbers and looked at it and got curious on. And um, it, it has really helped me make this store much more efficient and much more healthier. Um, and we, we spent, as I've touched on over the last few months, a lot of time culling out a thousand items from the store um, due to this health check. I did the check and I was like, man, we got so much junk. And I went through and culled out a thousand items and uh, brought it up to a 32, brought it from 28 to 32. Yet that took a lot of work to get that extra $4. But that $4 is actually a huge difference to the health of the store. 
So, I mean, hopefully it makes sense. What I would love is for you guys to do this check, which takes 30 seconds uh, on the laptop. Uh, do it yourself. Let me know what the numbers work out to. And if it's more than 10, $10 or more, I definitely think you should be doing that check. Uh, sorry, that, um, that uh, stock take and culling out some stuff. But um, let me know what your numbers are in the comments below. Let's get a bit of a comment thread going with a few of you guys in there that have done the, done the test. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll have a bit of a chat in the comments. Now, we've got a huge problem, guys, because this little single piece of paper has made me realize that this could be the end. This could be the end for a lot of DVD sellers, a lot of video game sellers. It's not good news. <clears throat> so, whether you know or maybe you don't know, uh, Australia Post increased their postage rates for the medium tract and the large tract, all of the envelopes basically. Let me just grab them. So, I've just got the little uh, screen grab up here of how much these things are now worth. I, I use thousands, literally thousands of these each and every year. So to see a price rise like this is very, very concerning. I've also got the large as well. Now, let's start with the large. That's gone up. If you buy a 10 pack, $81.40 for a 10 pack. That means every single one of these is now what a small satchel used to be. An envelope is now the price of a small satchel. $8.14 to send off for me, you know, two DVDs or two video games. The medium tracked envelopes that I put all of my DVDs and video games into. It's, it's a big concern for me because 50% of what I sell is DVDs and video games and this is how I ship it all off. Uh, $6.48. It used to be $5.30. So it's gone from $5.30 to $6.48. That's $1.20. $1.20. Let's say, let's just, oh wow. $1.20 by 1000 that's insane. 1200 bucks. Let's just say a thousand of these get, get sold or used. I buy a thousand of these a year. I've just lost off my bottom line, my true profit. Overnight, another $1,200. It's a lot of money out of nowhere to just be taken away from you. Uh, you know, you, you work so hard to make these sales and make this sort of profit and to then have a price increase from Australia Post, which is not the first in a long time. Australia Post have been increasing their postal rates, I feel like over the last 12 months, regularly. There's been regular price increases. I remember I used to be able to get these for $4.80. Now they're up at $6.48. So there's been about a $2 odd increase or a $1.70, $1.80 increase in the medium tracked envelope. And to have the large now the same size as the small satchels, this is going to be really hard for a lot of sellers out there if you're in the media game because there's a lot of us out there in the DVDs and the video games that were doing what I was doing previously, trying to sell off $10 to $15 video games and DVDs, $10 pieces of media, it might be CDs as well, whatever the case may be, VHS tapes, well, they go into a small satchel, but you, you know what I mean. Um, so to have this rise, it just it, it, it's such a big percentage of your profit that's pulled out. So what do we do? What do we do from here? And look, there was a, an alert from Australian Post about a month ago. So this is something I've known about for quite a while. It's obviously just the fact that it's now, I went out to the, the post office and I bought a 10 pack of these yesterday and I paid $65. And I'm like, oh my God. Um, so what are we gonna do? Well, we've already implemented what we're trying to do and I've already touched on it in previous videos. We are trying to now sell higher valued items, which is great, but you don't come across high valued items all too regularly in places like thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales. And in the private picks, well, they come through every few and far between, but it's just a really, really tough situation to be in because even, well, the bulk lots are, are definitely the way to go about it. We're bulk lotting up our video games and that's a good way to get them off because you, you get them a lot, a lot gone for a large average sale price, so that's fine. But I don't know, I just feel like it's just, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see over the next six to 12 months what the video games and the DVDs look like. Um, 
it's just a big price rise. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this price rise. Do you think people are going to stop selling on eBay as a result of it? Because I could see how it could lead to that. And I mean, yes, you could go down the untracked path. Don't get me wrong, I'm fully aware of that. But I don't want to send untracked. Uh, I'd like to send tracked. I'd like to have the, the, the comfort of knowing that if I sell a $30 item, I don't need to worry about it going missing in the post or a scammer trying to come after me. Um, and the stamp prices have gone up as well. If you are going down the untracked method, even that's increased in price. So, you know, the cost of a stamp, I don't even know what it is. Back when we used to do it, I saw a little price rise as well. So just across the board, there is just constant price increases in this one. And somebody even mentioned in the comments the other day that I should go and pre-purchase boxes um, from Australia Post or from any source, just, just buy boxes so it looks a little bit more professional. I am not doing that at all. I am going to find any form of free opportunity to have anything from a postage standpoint, whether it's getting a supply of bubble wrap that I can get cheap somewhere, um, potentially even for free. Um, you know, sticky tape if there's a way to buy bulk and lower the price of that and try and store it somewhere. Whatever I can do to lower the price of postage, because that is just such a big expense across this business. It's it's basically the second, probably the yeah, probably the second biggest expense to sourcing inventory. Uh, is postage. Last year it was about $32,000 in total. So I think we're going to be looking at about $35,000 if we do the same amount of sales this year. Um, you know, so what's that? An extra $3,000 that we've just added this year with all the different price rises that have come through over the last 12 months from last year's numbers. So it's pulling people out of wanting to do eBay because it's, it, it just, you really just need to have a, a larger average sale price. That's the biggest thing that I've worked out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. This is actually the biggest concern I've got as an eBay seller, the basketball. For us over here in Australia, the b-ball, this is on 9 to 3, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. every single day and I'm a huge basketball fan. So the TV's there, eBay's there, but the TV's there. It's really hard every single day. I'm always trying to stay away and just do the eBay work that we need to do to get the job done. But I don't know, today's in a pretty good spot. I might be able to watch a quarter or two. It's Thunder and Celtics, so it's a good game. It's just started, so I'll watch the first quarter, see how it goes. Um, in the meantime, while I do watch the first quarter, um, let's get into the thrift store. And I'll show you what I ended up buying yesterday. I always made my way to the shoe section, and uh, I found these. These are the Nike Pegasus 36 women's running shoes. Cool color, no fabric tears, only $10, and they're also a size 10 as well. So given there's a lot of sole tread left on the bottom there, I think we can get these done for about $45. I have sold the Pegasus so many times before, uh, so that's always a really exciting find. Um, I had a bit of a look at the other shoes, and unfortunately there wasn't really too much else uh, in store. So. I made my way to my next favorite category, which was the DVDs. I've never seen this one before. This is Shakespeare Retold. Whenever I don't know anything, I, I just jump on eBay and have a look at the comps. And this was actually going for about $35. So I was happy to pay the $4 in store for that one. Um, I also found this one as well, which I have found in variations before. Anything sort of 007, uh, you're going to do okay. So DVD of Roger Moore there, that was going for about $25. Um, how about that for Hugh Grant back in the day, if you don't mind, the uh, Barbara Cartland collection. Uh, $4, I reckon I can get that one done for about 30 or 35 because it was brand new and sealed. That's a really big factor when it comes to selling your DVDs. If you can find the little plastic cover to say that it's sealed, you're going to make a few more dollars. Uh, Taken as well, this one's only about $25, I believe. I don't think this one's too hectic. Uh, but look, for $4 in store, it's a DVD box set. I believe that the five seasons mean it is in its entirety. So it just means my sell-through rate on that DVD is going to be strong. So I've gone ahead and made the purchase. I saw some uh, Little Simpsons DVDs in there. They do all right if you can find a few of them. Um, but this one here as well that I found, um, it was actually called Lie to Me. Uh, and I love the fact that the third was the third and final. So it means this is a complete box set. And I'm paying $6 at $2 each. So that was great. Uh, and then I also found this, which unfortunately I couldn't go ahead with because it was quite large and the postage was going to be a lot of money. It was selling for about 75 odd dollars, but in store it was priced at 35. 
Um, so unfortunately, just way too much money. Might have been a cool Facebook marketplace flip for maybe $50, $60, uh, but I left it behind. Um, this one here, awesome pair of shoes. Really, really good pair of shoes, actually. Really surprising comps on this. They are definitely worn. They're, they're in pretty heavy pre-owned condition, but there is still plenty of wear left in them. And I had a look on eBay, and the Hyperdunks were selling for about $120-odd. So for 5 bucks, I might list these up for about $80. Uh, I also, in another store, found some more shoes, and these are two really good brands to be looking out for. The first one here is Ultra. Ultras are just a good trail running shoe over in the US. Um, I just got a stack of these not too long ago, and I was able to sell them all off in brand new condition for about $100 each. I made about two and a half grand on them, and they sold in lightning quick time as well. But given these are pre-owned, they're a US size 6, uh, $25 in store, I was probably going to be selling them for about $60 or $70. In the end, based on the size being a slower sell-through rate, I did leave them back on the shelf. Uh, but that was because I had these right next door. These were $35, but they're the Nike uh, Sky High Dunks, and they sell for about 100 bucks. So I figured $35 into 100 I'm looking for higher average sale price. That was pretty good. So what that mini haul does is it allows us to tick off the $500 worth of listings that we need for Sunday. So I'm going to spend the afternoon just listing up those items that you've just seen into the store for Sunday and we should be right. I know that I said that I was obviously a bit, a bit annoyed and a bit frustrated like we all are about the Australia Post post rise, um, but it is what it is. We've just got to work with it. We've just got to adapt. We've got to change things up. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to change the way that I go about selling on eBay when these things pop up. Um, so it won't be doom and gloom just yet, but geez, the price rises keep happening. It's going to make it tougher and tougher and more and more people are going to fall out of the game. And I don't want to be one of those people. So stick with me guys. Appreciate all your support. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because that helps me out a lot as well with this YouTube eBay business. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, which will hopefully be this one right here. A lot of good sales in that one. Go and check it out.